today we'll talk about uh, how to run uh, aws commands over a pipeline and so the ideal purpose is so in the previous uh, sessions or videos we have seen uh, how can we execute a uh, uh, AWS uh, CLI or uh, AWS SDK and uh, uh, things in our local mission and we were uh, executing the commands and we were seeing like how we can automate uh, stuff. So now we take it to the next step which is uh, rather executing those commands in our local mission we will be onboarding it in a pipeline and uh, then execute at the pipeline part. So the major uh, benefit you would get over here is we don't need to worry about uh, dependencies, we don't need to worry about uh, credentials of whose credentials you want to use because everything would be in a uh, centralized place. Uh, so when we talk about uh, CIC, right, so there are multiple tools available to achieve the same thing. For example, you have Jenkins GitLab and then you have GitHub Actions. So there are like a number of uh, things are available outside in the market to achieve what we're trying to do. For today's scenario, we'll go with GitHub Actions. The GitHub Actions, it comes with uh, the repository, which would be GitHub and we can integrate GitHub Actions to execute our command. So to start with, we will quickly create a repository, AWS CLI demo, and you can either make it as a public repository or private repository. So for now, we'll go with public. You can also make it as a private, and there are like some X amount of runtime, you get it for free with a Git repository. Okay, so now uh, you want to clone it in your local machine. So let me do that. To do, do that, you would use a command called git clone so now you have you see something like a plain repository so generally how the github actions work is i already have another repository for demo purpose i'll also go through that so that you can relate like what we are trying to do so whenever there is some changes happening or things what you can do you can execute the commands at the pipeline so for example we are executing the commands uh, using pipeline github generally follows something called as uh, yaml format so in order to make this actions recognized so what we want to do is in the github you want to create a folder called dot github and within the dot github you want to use a folder called workflows and within the workflows you want to create a file that ends with a yml extension okay so for example if i want to use like cli dot yml you can give anything like wasm dot yml or link dot yml whatever you want to do you can provide it here so any file you provide it here that will be recognized as a uh, GitHub Actions. And uh, so now talking about the GitHub Actions, there are like multiple parameters over there. So one you would like to know is something called as workflows. Okay, so workflows is like what are the tasks or what are the sequence we are going to execute. And each workflows uh, would consist of sub jobs. So you have a, a job one, job two, likewise you can have multiple uh, jobs within that and uh, each job would consist of steps in steps you would generally mention the commands to execute or uh, any actions to perform and uh, in workflow you can mention like which flow it should go is, is there any dependencies of let's say job one should uh, execute first and job two should execute second or is it can be like run parallelly and you can also create a parallel workflow altogether like uh, workflow one and workflow two you can uh, create it github also comes with something called as uh, uh, github actions let's say for aws cli you might be knowing you want to in the in your local machine you want to run some explicit command right to get your uh, cli installed what github offers is there is something called github actions let's say and that gives you the predefined uh, or uh, you can execute existing repository in your current one aws config grid so that's one of the uh, GitHub Actions uh, which is offered by the offi official AWS creds. So when you try using this, this uh, task will automatically do all the actions for you. In the case like of installing a CLI or uh, configuring your credentials and what parameter it would require and also it gives like is it mandatorily needed and also things like best practices to follow, what credentials you want to use or like how least grant permissions is recommended and there are like n number of ways to authenticate like for example you can use session manager to create a short time credentials or you can go with long time token uh, and pass the credentials if you're using the github enterprise or using your own ec2 instance you can use iam roles for the instance to assume and you can pass your credentials so there are like n number of uh, way to pass your credentials and then execute it and uh, this github actions which is like predefined and already managed by aws is easily available which we can uh, 
use it in our workflow to get the task done. So I already have a repository created for a demo purpose. Uh, first, we will go through that line by line and then we can, uh, this would be your workflow name and you have the jobs written over here and this would be your uh, job name. Okay, so here the deploy is a job name and you can uh, go for it further. And then each job should consist of multiple steps in it. And each steps, it would consist of multiple, what do you say, commands or things like that. So that's how the entry flow would look like. And what you have seen in terms of on here is, it, these are the uh, triggering point, like when my accents or when my uh, CA series would execute the jobs or the steps, whichever is defined as part of the workflow. So here we say, whenever there is a, a push to my main branch or whenever there is a pull request to my main branch, then this workflow should execute. So that's what this specific flow things will get triggered. It won't trigger uh, by default. Whenever any of the specific action mentioned under on, uh, it's created, then only the our GitHub actions would get executed. Okay, I'll also show you that in a real time demo. And then if you go uh, further deep into it, what we are doing is, so this one, the uh, users accents slash checkout is something like, again, it's GitHub predefined actions. So what it will help us is to clone our repository into the local CA. So if you're having files like this Python file, like to execute or the SDK one in which we see, so you can write a Node.js one and then you can try execute that node.js file and you use checkout at that YAML. So that what happens is SH as part of this, then that will be get cloned into the CACD and then you can say like execute uh, this specific file. So that's what this specific checkout at the red V2 accents does. And we are using AWS accents as well for configuring our credentials. And since we use this, we get uh, the CLI as part of the runner and you can Execute within the steps, you can use run execute the CLA command. So, for example, in demo here, we are using AWS S3 LS part of it. Okay, so let's copy this for uh, let's run it in our OGI created. So, if I go here and if I paste and then to push the changes to uh, currently it's still in our local machine. If I want to push it to the repository, I would do is since we are adding two folders in one file, I would do git add dot. So that adds to our like the track of changes that to be committed. And then I would do a git commit with a message of adding, let's say, workflow. And I would push it to our main branch. So to do that, you would say git push and then origin your branch name. So in real world, you would create a, a pull request and then you would merge it. For demo purpose, I'm just going with the simplistic directly putting pushing it to the main branch. Okay. So if you go to the repository of our one which is a CLI demo and under accents you would start seeing that you are seeing the, some dotted line maybe let's go for so this means like something is executing so our accents is file is recognized but it's giving an error message so you can see like what is happening over here and it says uh, the credentials could not be loaded and it also gives you like what command it tried to execute it and uh, things around there you can uh, see have something called deploy to AWS. So that would be your workflow name. So if you see in our code as well, so this is a job name, right? So deploy to AWS, you have it. And if you go for the one, AWS CLA action is our workflow name. So you can recollect, like you can connect what we are using here and how it is reflecting in the dev consoles. And you have something called runs on. So runs on is like uh, which OS uh, the GitHub action should use to run it. So since we are using AWS CLI, we can go with native Ubuntu latest OS. If you are working on something specific to Windows PowerShell, then you choose the OS that is Windows based or even Mac OS based images are available. Okay. So for, since we are going with Linux based, I just went with Ubuntu latest and that's most around it. Now, if you see passing the credentials, it's something more sensitive topic, right? We can't directly pass it as a plain text. That will be a, cre a critical security breach. So that's why what we are doing in our cases, we are passing it as a, a secrets. So when we say like secrets dot the secret name, we don't ideally uh, pass it as a non encrypted value. No one can explicitly print it as a uh, plain text. So that's the idea behind using secrets. Since it's for demo purpose, we are setting or exporting by passing the secrets. In real world, you can use IAM roles for your EC2 instance runners for the GitHub actions or even you can use AWS uh, short time credentials like SSO commands to generate short time credentials during the execution and handle the phase. So now if you see, we want to create different uh, secrets. So how can we do that is, so first thing you would need to, we would need the 
token for our uh, credentials. I use a control tower way of uh, mechanism of login. I've already made a separate uh, video for it. I'll also link that one. So if you see, there is something called uh, the AWS CLI and you get the token, right? So don't worry, this credentials would expire in like 15 minutes or 20 minutes. So even if you take a screenshot and try to use it, it won't work when the video is published, okay? So now, uh, <clears throat> so we want to add the secrets to our repository. So we are setting up three secrets, right? One is access key ID, and then you have access secret key, and then you have AWS secret token. So we want to pass these three things in our specific pipeline. So to do that, you go to the GitHub Actions, you see settings, and within the secrets and variables, you have something called Actions. So now you have uh, two different things. One is environment secrets, and the another is repository secrets. So in our case, we would go with uh, repository secrets. Then you add the uh, secret ID. So in our case, it's going to be secret ID here, and then um, save the uh, secret value over here. So now, once you add it, uh, even if you have access to the repository, if you come and edit it, you can't view that what's been added. So if you want to take a backup of your secrets or future use, you would need to do on your own. Uh, you can't, you know, act smart like uh, printing like echo secrets dot. It won't let it publish. So that's how the GitHub Actions is secured. You can't retrieve what's been already uploaded. So if your uh, team, some number A is adding a secret and you want to add the same secret to some other repository, you can't recover it. But in the some other legacy or other GitHub, like GitLab or other mechanism, you can go and read the credentials and that security loophole is there. But in GitHub Actions, uh, you can't perform that. So once it's lost, it's lost. So now I pass the secret key, we ask the another value. And then let's also pass the uh, session token. So it's not export. So the, now our credentials have been added. Now if I go to Accents, so I can go to the Accents and I can uh, rerun the jobs. So now it's going to rerun it and it's going to fetch it. Let's see uh, this way. And then we'll also make some dummy commit and see like whether the action is getting uh, tri triggered or not. So now what we get is we get something like the security token included in the request is invalid. So it can be the case I had a wrong value or a token might be, you know, expired. So how can I test this? I can copy my token. I can do it here and see like is it still valid or not just to be on a safer set. It's still valid. So let's try to do one more thing. Let's okay. So let's try go here again and see what would be the cost? So to go for accents, so you have a secret key ID. Might be some typo or something might have happened. Um, so let me just re-add the value. So now if you see like when I'm updating, sometimes since I recently logged in, it was like okay with it. But sometimes what happens is it would ask for a multi-factor authentication. So if I do it now again and go with the session token. Let me also see what is the variable name we are using here. So if you want to go here and you see the one which we are using is a different one. So let me add a new repository secret and you see as a token and so it should be like the same one. So you can't pass something and expect it to work ideally. So so what are we using this CLS token so that you always try to maintain a, a clean secrets and that will help you to troubleshoot in later because if you go out of team today and someone wants to do a cleanup they will go into a confused state so if i go here now and let's try rerun all jobs there are two options either, right like rerun all jobs or rerun uh, failed jobs so in case if you're having two jobs in a sequence and if the job two alone failed then you can choose like rerun, rerun failed jobs so that you don't need to re-execute the first job again so now if you see our uh, credence has been configured successfully and uh, our checkout repository is done and you can also see our CLA is executed, the AWS SPLS, which would be like listing all the S3 buckets and then the output of the commands is visible. Okay, so same way you can use Node.js and things around that to run your AWS commands in a CA CD way. This is a very beginner guide, like how you can rather running it locally, how can you make it run in a you know, CA CD pipeline. So that's more around it for the GitHub action stuff. So any uh, questions?